Chapter 12 Zack wandered all over the ground looking for Kelly. Everywhere he went he saw angels and mermaids and tigers. He saw three Scarlet O'Hara's and four Captain Kirk's and three Catwomen. One of them was Lisa, who told him she hadn't seen Kelly or Jesse in a while. Zack found Slater morosely watching a moonlit game of tennis. Well, there's, there's a sentence I thought I would never uh, read. The match was being played by the Beast from Beauty and the Beast and a woman wearing a top hat and tails. Hey, Slater, he called as he came up. Have you seen Kelly? Slater looked at him, startled. Zack guessed that he hadn't asked Slater a direct question in a couple of weeks. In fact, he'd barely even talked to him. No, he said, not since I talked to her on the patio. I left her sitting there alone for a while. She wasn't, um, in the mood to talk. Zack eyed him. Are you sure it was Kelly? Slater looked at him, puzzled. What do you mean? Of course it was Kelly. How could I miss that green hair? Zack groaned. Have I got a story for you. Quickly, Zack filled him in on Kelly and Jesse's look-alike costumes and his talk with Jesse. I'm not sure what's up, Zack said. I do know that Jesse put a green rinse in her hair to prove to Kelly that she didn't ruin hers deliberately. And Kelly said she was wearing Jesse's costume to prove the same thing. Slater said. He hit his forehead. That means I probably told Jesse that I wanted to break up with Kelly. You broke up with Kelly? Zack said, startled. You slime! I thought you didn't want me to date her, Slater barked. I don't, but how could you break up with her? Zack demanded. She's perfect. I know, Slater said, but she's not perfect for me, and I'm not perfect for her. Zack frowned, concerned. How did she take it? I don't know, Slater said. She might have been Jessie, remember? She probably was Jessie. She did seem kind of tall. I remember thinking she was probably wearing heels. I thought she, you said she was sitting down, Zack said. I did, Slater said sheepishly. I was nervous, man. What can I say? I wasn't thinking straight. But why didn't Jessie say something? Why didn't Kelly say something to you? Zack sighed. Who knows? Maybe because once... For once, they were hearing the truth. None of us has been straight with each other lately. Or maybe we haven't been straight with ourselves. Slater nodded. That's for sure. There was an awkward pause. Look. Zack st started. Listen, Slater said. They grinned at each other. Friends, Zack said. No matter what happens with Jesse and Kelly. Yeah. Assuming we can tell them apart, that is. Friends, Slater said. Just then, the two guys saw, with, saw two girls with green hair heading towards them. Kelly was now wearing her trench coat over her body stocking. What do you know, Zack said. At least we can tell you guys apart. Zack and I figured out that we made our confessions to the wrong girls, Slater said sourly. We're sorry, guys, Jesse said. We didn't mean to fool you that way. I ran into Jesse in the ladies' room, Kelly said to Zack. I told her what you, th what you thought you told her, and I told Kelly what you thought you told her, Jesse said to Slater. You were very sweet. Slater looked at Kelly. Is everything okay? Slater, Kelly nodded. Everything's fine. You were right, Slater. I was thinking the very same thing. I'm just glad we're all friends again. We are, aren't we? Zack and Slater nodded. You bet. Jesse summoned up a smile. She wasn't happy about Slater, but she was happy she had her friends back. That made all the difference. Kelly, Zack said in a low tone. Or Kelly, Zack said in a low tone. What I said about Irina, Kelly slipped her mask back on. Forget it, Zack. It doesn't matter. I understand. Lisa hurried up to them, her tail twitching. Has anyone seen Cal? I know he'll be, he'll be wearing an owl mask. Nanny, Nanny told me. Has anyone seen an owl? Who? Zack asked. Who? Kelly said. Exactly. Lisa said triumphantly. <clears throat> Cal Everhart stepped into the entrance of the country club. He saw Jeff Racine, a tennis buddy, poke his head into the hall. Then Jeff caught sight of Cal. Have you seen Lisa? Jeff asked. Cal slipped his feathered owl mask over his head. I just got here. Great mask, Jeff said. Actually, it's kind of tight, Cal said. I tried to wear it on the way, on the way over here just to impress the other drivers on the road, but it's really uncomfortable. Do you think my nose is too big? Hey, don't answer that. Well, it looks great, Jeff said, grinning. 
Lisa would say that that's what's really important. Lisa is used to heels and electric curlers, Cal said, slipping off the mask with a grimace. She's had more training in pain than I have. Jeff laughed. <laughs> Here, he said, handing Cal his parrot mask. We can trade if you like. Cal slipped the mask on. Ah, he said in relief. That's much better. Point me towards the point me toward the bird seed, will you? And if I see Lisa, I'll give you a squawk. <clears throat> a few minutes later, Lisa scooted out into the hall and almost ran into Cal. There you are, he said. She could barely hear him behind the owl mask, but to her surprise, he swept her up into a hug. Lisa's cheeks glowed. Cal did have a crush on her. She was right. Lisa had been waiting so long to talk to him that the words spilled out of her in a rush. Oh, Cal, she murmured. I'm so glad you just did that. I feel the same way. The other day in the library, I was so glad when you realized you suspected that I was the other one who had a crush on you. You saw my secret. That must mean it was meant to be me. I want to get back together. Do you, Cal? Slowly, Cal reached up and removed the mask. Lisa gasped in horror. It wasn't Cal at all. It was Jeff Racine. Jeff, she cried. It's you. Sorry to disappoint you, Jeff said icily. I, I, Lisa stammered. It's okay, Lisa said. Or, it's okay, Lisa, Jeff said. I don't think there's anything you can say right now that I want to hear. He turned around and stalked off. Lisa started after Jeff, but she was stopped by a, a shrill scream. She hurried to the door of the ballroom. Through the crowd, she saw Irina Pastovic, her face white, weave as though she, as though she would fall. Her, her jeweled mask fell to the floor at her feet, and Nanny picked it up. Irina put her hands to her face. What's wrong? Lisa asked aloud. Alan Zobel was standing next to her. It must be what happened in Zoldavia today, he said. What happened? Lisa asked. The ceasefire class collapsed, Alan told her. I heard it on the radio all on the way here. Carcassia was shelled today. A whole neighborhood of the city was destroyed. Oh, my gosh, Lisa said. Poor Irina. Suddenly, Irina began to push her way through the crowd. She, sh she hurried to the door of the patio, slipped through it, and disappeared. Her parents are still in Carcassia, right? Alan asked. Yes, Lisa said numbly. It makes our problems seem small, doesn't it? Alan asked. Lisa started, stared out at the cold moon. Yes, it does, she said softly. <clears throat> Zach heard the news a few minutes later. He was standing outside talking to a group of Bayside kids when Jennifer Ralston mentioned Irina's cry and her sudden disappearance. When did it happen? he asked, instantly concerned. A few minutes ago, Jennifer said. Nobody knows where Irina disappeared to. Nanny said she doesn't have a car. Zach hurried away from the group. He had to find Irina. He should be the one to comfort her. Comfort her. Until they got more news, she wouldn't have any information from, from about her parents and their safety. It would be a long night, and Zack wanted to be with her. When Zack dashed into the ballroom, he spotted Screech across the floor. Screech was dressed as a pirate in a striped t-shirt and a satin eye patch. Screech pushed through the crowd towards him. What ho, me hearty, Screech greeted him, brandishing a plastic sword. Have you heard? Zack asked. Carcassia was shelled today. Irina heard the news and practically fainted. Doesn't that prove she can't be a spy? Where is she now? Screech said. I don't know, Zack said, running a hand through his hair. I have to find her, Screech. There's the gang, Screech said. Let's ask them if they've seen her. Screech and Zack hurried towards the group. Has anyone seen Irina? Screech asked. Jessie shook her head. Did you hear about the ceasefire violation? Zack nodded. Jennifer and Irina almost fainted. Lisa nodded. I saw it. It was awful. I've got to find her, Zack said. Kelly looked away. She swallowed against a lump in her throat. Zack is frantic, she thought. He really must be in love. Then Kelly took a deep breath. She had no right to be hurt. She had to be glad for him. Irina was a good person who was all alone in this country. She needed someone like Zack. Nanny rushed up to them, her face streaked with tears. Her red wig was askew, and her mascara was running. Oh, Lisa, she cried. How could this have happened? Lisa st started guiltily. Gosh, she said. How did you find out? Nanny, I don't know what to say. Sometime, sometimes life just whacks you upside the head. 
you think that you know who you're in love with and wham, it turns out to be somebody else. You're telling me, Kelly muttered. Irina dropped her mask and picked it up. Nanny burbled. She twisted the material of her gold dress and some sequins dropped off. It's so pretty with all those jewels on it. She bought it in Paris. So I put it on and kept on looking for Cal. I found him. Nanny burst into fresh tears. Lisa began to see that she was she just might be off on off the hook. Maybe Nanny wasn't talking about her crush on Cal. What happened? she asked. And stop twisting that dress, girl. There's no reason to ruin a perfectly perfectly good fashion statement. <laughs> he thought it, I was Irina. Nanny said between sobs. He was all upset. He told me, I mean Irina, that they had to switch to the emergency plan. He said he'd meet me, Irina, in the parking lot. Nanny swiped at her cheeks. He was involved with Irina all along, she said. They'd been carrying on behind everyone's back. How could I have been so stupid? Lisa put her arm around Nanny. Now, now, she soothed. You don't know anything for sure. Zack motioned to Screech and drew him a few paces away. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Screech nodded, his eyes on Nanny. That nanny looks pretty even when she cries, he asked dreamily. Zack punched Screech in the shoulder. That Cal Everhart is in cahoots with Irina, Screech gasped. You mean they're both spies? I don't know, Screech, Zack said, but something's fishy. Why did he say they needed to follow the emergency plan? And why the secret meeting in the parking lot? He snapped his fingers. Wait a second! Didn't Cal say at the party that he has a Zoldavian grandmother? Oh my gosh, Screech shrieked. They're spies. I knew I should have worn my James Bond costume. I bet I know where Cal and Irina are going, Zack said. Suddenly, Zack and Screech found themselves surrounded, but it wasn't by counterintelligence, counterintelligence agents. It was by Jesse, Slater, Lisa, and Kelly. What's going on, Jesse asked. Who's a spy? Slater demanded. What does this have to do with Irina? Kelly asked. And Cal, Lisa added. Zack and Screech exchanged glances. It's a long story, Zack said. And we have to get back, get to the government plant, Screech said. Zack, let's synchronize our watches. Screech, we're going together, Zack said patiently. We don't have to do that. What are you guys talking about? Jesse asked, frustrated. Are you in trouble? Slater asked. Tell us... So we can help, Kelly said. Zack looked at his watch. Like I said, it's a long story, he said. We'll tell you on the way.